Hi, my name is Atif Darush, professor of OBG in Asset University, Egypt. Today I'd like to show you a short video on how to treat a case of Swire syndrome uh, using laparoscopy. You know Swire syndrome is a mutation in the sex determining region or gene which is located on the short arm of Y chromosome of male individuals. Swire syndrome is also uh, called XY female because the appearance of this individual is female but genotypically this individual is XY and it is a form of male pseudohermaphrodite. In the intrauterine life, the male individual should have a Y chromosome and this Y chromosome ha should have a sex determining region on the short arm of this Y chromosome. But some individuals with mutation of this uh, gene on the short arm of Y chromosome will have Y chromosome but not functioning Y chromosome. So the gonads or tests will not be functioning, will not secrete testosterone from the leading cell and also will not secrete uh, molar inhibitor substance from sertory cells. The end result will be no suppression of Mullerian duct, so this male individual will have an internal uh, development of internal organs of females, which is the uterus, fallopian tubes, the cervix and upper part of the vagina, because of absence of Mullerian inhibitor substance from sertory cells and also the leading cells will not form testosterone so the external genitalia will not be exposed to the dihydrotestosterone which is the active form of testosterone so the resultant will be female external genitalia and female internal genitalia while the gonads are male testes but not functioning so this is a form of discrepancy between the uh, phenotype and genotype of an individual and this is the picture of a patient with Swire syndrome with absent testosterone molar inhibitor substance despite being genotypically uh, male the phenotype will be female the internal organs will be female but the gonads will be non-functioning tests so it is uh, like androgen insensitivity with uh, the addition of absence of anti mullerian hormone production. Actually, it is a form of intersex because intersex means discordance between any two of the organic sex criteria. And if you find the criteria of sex here, the organic sex is formed of genotype. Here the genotype is 46XY. The phenotype is female. The gonads is tests. Internal genital organs are uh, female Mullerian duct because absence of Mullerian inhibitor substance and the external genitalia will be female so it is a form of intersex and this is the appearance of sex determining region uh, Y chromosome present on the short arm of Y chromosome uh, and it is the cause of the absence of testosterone Mullerian inhibitor substance and subsequently Mullerian duct development and uh, non-functioning testes because no y uh, functioning Y chromosome, no uh, testosterone. And this is the uh, actual appearance of uh, this disease uh, in the uh, era of XY uh, uh, diseases of intersex. And this is the appearance of this female, uh, no facial hair, no chest hair because no testosterone, no ovaries, so no menstruation. The gonads are tests but not functioning. The female pattern of pubic hair because the female character is neutral, breast development in many cases, so the appearance of the female uh, is normal in this uh, uh, disease or syndrome. Many of those individuals have normal female appearance uh, because the female character is neutral and absent testosterone effect on this uh, genotypically male individual and it occurs in around 1 in 30,000 uh, people because of gene mutation of this uh, gene present on the short arm of Y chromosome. Such a case is presenting with a female development until the puberty with uh, primary amenorrhea, presenting with primary amenorrhea 
on investigations including uh, genotype uh, evaluation they will appear as male but the uterus is present so uh, the diagnosis of Swire syndrome is raised and such a case should be treated by orchidectomy of these gonads of male but not functioning because they are functionless uh, no value of testosterone in such a case and also the presence of intra-abdominal testes will lead to development of gonadoplastoma in around 10% of cases so this is a need as for uh, development of subsequent malignancy later on so we have to advise the uh, uh, patient and her uh, her parents that orchidectomy is uh, one of the best ways to save this patient from subsequent gonadoplastoma later in and those cases can have pregnancy uh, later on also uh, because they have uterus, cervix, vagina and this can be done by uh, oocyte uh, donation from another female and some case reports on pregnancy in such cases uh, in uh, recent years and also uh, not so recent but recent cases reported uh, pregnancy uh, successfully occurred in those cases. In this short video you can see the uterus is small sized because it developed due to absence of mullerian inhibitory substance and the gonads are uh, streaks, they are not ovaries, they are streak gonads. The patient has XY chromosome and these are streak gonads and uh, in this short movie you can see how to excise them using bipolar coagulation of the meso ovarium and this is a simple procedure and you have to make counter traction of the meso ovarium towards midline to avoid uh, unintentional uh, coagulation of any vital organ underneath the meso ovarium some uh, case reports in uh, literature mention that we have to dissect the peritoneum until the inguinal uh, opening and make extensive surgeries. This is not uh, highly recommended because bipolar coagulation is quite sufficient to make hemostasis and then you grasp this streak gonad and make uh, excision of the uh, gonad by using a coarse needle, not fine needle because fine needle can lead to excessive bleeding. Coarse needle was blunt and uh, in this video it is uh, originally prepared by our team to avoid uh, uh, injury of any blood vessel underneath the meso ovarium and by this coarse needle we can excise the gonads from its base to avoid presence of any uh, cells from the gonads uh, for fear of subsequent gonadoplastoma as I told you and uh, separation of the uh, gonads is going step by step until the gonad is completely separated from the meso ovarium and no bleeding occurs uh, with simple technique so bipolar coagulation of the uh, base of the gonads and meso ovarium surrounding meso ovarium is the key of a simple procedure of excision of the gonads uh, using coarse needle uh, to cut them from the uh, underneath uh, structures and when the gonads are separated on this side they are uh, extracted uh, by using a 10 millimeter auxiliary portal trocar and using uh, clue forceps or something like this and the same step uh, should be done on the left side also coagulation of the meso ovarium until it is completely separated uh, coagulated and then the uh, uh, gonad uh, is grasped by using any forceps you have like uh, such a case and you grasp the gonad and make counter traction to avoid injury of the uh, lateral wall vasculature and make dissection or excision of the gonads uh, by gentle and gradual 
coagulation of the base to avoid any vascular injury until the gonad is completely separated from uh, the mesovarium and in such a case the left ovary is smaller and it can be grasped or extracted by uh, a glue forceps via a 10 millimeter auxiliary trocar uh, to be sent for histopathology. It's easily extracted, no need to put an endo bag or any uh, other tool. Histopathology revealed that this is a case of mixed gonadal dysgenesis, and of course, this patient was put on uh, estrogen replacement therapy uh, as uh, she is a female and the sex of breeding was female. And if you like this video, uh, please press on like icon and don't forget to uh, press on subscribe and notification icons as well for more videos and thank you very much.